Hello everyone. Let's talk about the object-oriented programming in this lecture. In the future, when we mention object-oriented programming, I will use a short term, OOP, to represent this development philosophy. What is uh, object-oriented programming, or a OOP? First, I want to show you an example. Have you played a game called uh, Super Mario Brothers before? If you have, you could meet uh, several million of characters inside of this game. We have uh, flying turtles, monster mushrooms, and big boss. We also have uh, Mario and Luigi Brothers. It's fun to have so many characters inside of this game. But uh, it raises a development question to developers. Do we need to create all of these million characters one by one, or we have something better to use? This is actually a good question, because we want to save time in the development process. So we have to find some better way to create so many characters for this game. This is what we can do. We first look at all these characters in the game. We found we can classify them into two groups. The first group is the bad guys, and the second group is the good guys. Then we look at each group. Inside of the bad guy group, no matter how many turtles, mushrooms, or big boss we have, they have so many things in common. For instance, all of them can run, all of them can shoot fires, all of them try to kill Mario Brothers. We want to summarize all these common properties, characteristics, or capabilities among bad guys into a model. Next time when we create a new bad guy, we only need to make a copy from this model that has all these common properties, capabilities, or characteristics. For instance, we want to create a new flying turtle. We only need to make a copy of the bad guy, so we don't have to repeat and waste the time in developing those common properties such as kill Mario Brothers, shoot fires, and so on. We can also apply the same principle to the good guy group. Both Mario and Luigi have something in common. For instance, both of them can run, both of them can use weapons, both of them can save Princess Peach. So we want to summarize all these common properties or characteristics into a good guy model. Next time when we create a, a new good guy, for instance, your Mario got killed, the game will give you a new Mario. The game only needs to make a copy from the good guy model. This example shows two very important concepts to everyone. They are a class and an object. In Python programming, we call a model that summarizes the common properties and functionalities of a group of something, a class. We call a copy from a class, an object. For instance, we can treat customers as a class because all customers have uh, some common properties. All of them have a name. All of them has a mailing address and so on and so forth. That's why we can treat all customers as a class. Then each individual customer in this class population is an object. Eric can be considered as an object of the customer's class. Tina is another object of the customer's class, and so on and so forth. Cars is another good example of a class. Each individual brand can be considered an object from the car's class. Honda is an object of the car's class. Ford Motors is another object of the car's class and so on and so forth. When we develop an application in Python, we always want to ask ourselves a question. Can I expand the current application into a class? If I can, 
that will be great. Because in the future, if I develop a similar application, I don't have to repeat the development process. I only need to make a copy from the class. That will save a lot of cost and time for a developer. I want to use an example to show everyone how to implement an object-oriented programming in Python. Let's see the example. We want to create a class called uh, Players. This class has the following two variables to describe a player. Each player should have an ID number and a name. Player ID should have a numerical values such as 1001, 1002, 1010, and so on. Player name variable should have a character values such as Tina Johnson, Eric Smith, and so on. After we build this uh, player class, we want to create uh, a function for this class. The function name is called uh, showInfo. The purpose of showInfo is to show the player's name on the computer screen. We want to create uh, two players based on the player class. For the first player, we want to give this player an uh, ID number, 3066. This player's name is Bohan. For the second player, the ID number is 4978. The player's name is Lisa Smith. So after the discussion we just had, we want to build a player model. And then for each particular player, we don't have to repeat the development process over and over again. We just make a copy for each player and then give the particular ID number and the name to this copy of the player class. This is what we want to do. How can we use the OOP approach to complete this application in Python? Before I introduce the application of uh, the object-oriented programming in Python, let's learn some uh, terminologies of this approach. First, attribute. What is an uh, attribute? A variable that belongs to a class is called uh, an attribute. For instance, in our case, in the players class, we use two variables, right? Player ID and player name. Then in this class, we should have uh, two attributes. As you can see, attributes are variables. So when you create uh, attributes in Python, we have to follow the rules for creating a valid variable names in Python, as we learned in chapter 2. In this case, we want to create uh, two attributes, two class variables, player underscore ID and player underscore name. You can change the attributes name. For instance, you can create a player ID or player name. They are valid attributes names as well. Second, Method. What is a method? A function that belongs to a class is called a, a method. In our case, in the player's class, we have a, one method. It's called a show info. Then basically we have a, one method in this class. The method name is show info. I want you to understand these two terminologies before I introduce how we can implement the OOP methodology in the Python programming. Now let's take a look at how to write a class in Python. The first thing you want to do is to write the keyword class. Notice that class is in lowercase. You cannot write class in uppercase. After the keyword class, you want to create a, a name for this class. In our case, we call this class players. After the class name, you want to write down a set of parentheses and a colon. Below the colon, you can start writing the class contents. In our case, the second line is a statement with six double quotes. We have three double quotes on each side of this statement. This is something called a doc string. This is optional. 
It's just the explanation of the purpose, the contents of a class. You can have the statement like uh, this one or not have it. It's optional. So it's up to the developer to decide if you want to have this doc string. Under the doc string, you can start building the model for this class. The first thing we want to build is called uh, the init method. Init represents initiation. This is a preparation before we do further calculation in a class. When you write a init method, you want to start with the keyword DEF. DEF represents definition. This is a required keyword when we write a function. Since a method is a class function, we must start a method with DEF. After DEF, we have a white space. After the space, we must type in two underscore and then type in INIT, init. This is required. You must follow the rules specified by Python. After init, you want to type another two underscore. After this two underscore, you want to type in a set of parentheses. Between the parentheses, the first variable you want to write is called a self. This is another keyword from Python, self. We must follow the rule. We must type in the variable name self, no matter which class you create in the future. After self, you want to type in a comma. In our case, we want to create uh, two variables after self, player underscore ID comma, and then player underscore name. These two variables represent variables that will hold the user's input. Because when we create uh, two new players in the future, we want to give each player an ID number, a name. We use player underscore ID, player underscore name to represent the user's inputs in the future. After the ending parentheses, you want to type in a colon. This will end the statement of a init method. In the init method, what we want to do is very simple. We want to give a player underscore ID to self dot player underscore ID. Some classmates may have a question. What do we try to do here? Here we use self.player underscore ID to represent the class attribute. As I just said, player underscore ID represents a variable. This variable will have the user's inputs as the value. After this variable gets the user's input, we want to give a player underscore ID's value to this class attribute self dot player underscore id by doing this our class is able to receive the user's input and then the user's input will be given to the class attributes then we can use class methods to do some calculation based on these values same thing to the second uh, statement self dot player underscore name equals to player underscore name. We want to use player underscore name to receive the user's input and then give this value of a player underscore name to the attribute self dot player underscore name. After we get this value, we can do some uh, calculation based on the value as well. This is how you build the init method. Remember, a init method is required. No matter what class you build in the future, you must have a init method first. Next, we can create a, a class method if you have. In our case, we do have a, a class method called a show info. The purpose of show info is to display the player's name on the computer screen. Similar to the init method, we have to use the DEF keyword to start the class method. And then we give a, a class method name 
In our case, it's called the show info, and then a set of parentheses. Notice that between these parentheses, we want to type in the keyword self. The keyword self is required. No matter what class methods you build in the future, you must type in the keyword self. After the ending parentheses, type in the colon to end this statement. Let's take a look at what we want to do in the showInfo method. We want to use the print function to show a message on the computer screen. This player's name is, the name will be the value the user gave to us in the future. Notice that we use the attribute self.player underscore name to get the user's input. The user's input will be character type data. To this type of data, we can have a build-in function. It's called a title. We can capitalize the first letter in each word. Let's implement uh, the codes we just uh, discussed in Python. Open a new document in Genie, and then type in class, the keyword class. Players, the class name players, parentheses, and then colon. In the next line, first you want to press the tab key on your keyboard to create an indent. And then type in three double quotes. This is a doc string. This class has two attributes and uh, one method. And then another three double quotes. The purpose of this statement is to document the purpose, the contents of a class. And then create a new line. We want to build the init method. Type in def space two underscore and then init another two underscore parentheses. The first variable in the init method should be self and then a comma. Self is required. No matter what method you build in the future, always remember between the parentheses, we want to type in self first. After the comma, we create uh, two variables to hold the user's input. First one is called a player underscore ID, a comma, and then player underscore name, and then a colon after the ending parentheses. Create a new line. Here you want to press the tab key on your keyboard to create another indent. Remember, in Python, we use indent to show the belonging relationship between codes. If we have an indent before a statement, that means this statement belongs to the previous statement. What we want to do is to give the variables that have a the user's inputs to the class attributes. Self dot player underscore ID equals to player underscore ID. Then self dot player underscore name equals to player underscore name. And then create uh, two new lines. In line 8, we want to press the backspace key to remove the previous indent. We create a new method called the show info. Type in def and then type in show info. Parentheses. Between show info, we have uh, the keyword self. And then a colon. Create a new line. Next, we want to press the tab key to create an indent to show this current statement belongs to show info method. The function we want to do is to print the message on the computer screen. Type in print 
between parentheses, let's type in a method. This player's name is and then a plus sign. We want to show the user's inputs. Currently, the user's input is stored in the player i player name attribute. So let's type in self dot player underscore name, and then another dot, and then we use the building function title. This is what we want to do. Let's save the model in our computer. Let's call this players.py and then save. We have already got the model, but how can we use this model? How can we use the players class to create the two individual players? Let's take a look at the requirement. We want to create the two players. First player is Bohan, second player is Lisa Smith. They have a different ID numbers. This is how we use the model we just built to create the two players. First, create a, a new line in Gini. And then press the backspace key to remove the indents. This means the current statement does not belong to the model we just built. Remove all indent in the new line. And then we want to create a, a variable called a player1. Player1 equals to players, parentheses. Between parentheses, we want to give uh, the player ID and the name. Let's type in 3066 and then comma and then two double quotes and then type in ball hand. What we want to do is to give these two values to the attributes in this model. And then we will have a, a object from the player's class. The first player is Bohan with ID number 3066. If we give these two values to this model, then the player Bohan should have uh, all attributes, all methods we specified in the model. Let's try it out. Let's use the show info method from the object Bohan. Let's type in player one dot show info and then parentheses. We can execute the code. Now you can see the result. This player's name is Bohan. This is how we specified in the model, right? We want to show the player's name. This player's name is, and then the user's input. We give a Bohan as the user's input for the first player, and then the first player will have the show info method. This is very cool. Let's use the same method to build the second player. Let's call this player player number two, and then equals to players. Let's see the value, 4978, 4978, and then her name is Lisa Smith. After we give these two values to the model we built above, then player 2 will have all attributes, all methods the model has. If we do player 2.showInfo, Parentheses. If we execute the code, you can see player2 also has the show info method. Let's think about a question. Suppose we are developing a game. This game has millions of uh, players. If we want to show each player's name on the computer screen, do we have to develop the show info method or function for each player one by one? or we can use the OOP approach. Of course, we should use the OOP approach because as you can see in this case, we only need to develop the codes once and then we can use the OOP approach to copy the same codes for each player and then we can save a lot of time and effort. 
This is why OOP approach is very popular in computer programming. After this class, please use the concept I just introduced to everyone to complete this exercise. In this exercise, I want you to create a class called uh, Cars. This class has uh, two attributes, car brand and price. And also we want to create uh, a method called uh, show brand to show each car's name. You can use the similar approach we just uh, discussed to complete this exercise. This concludes today's lecture. I will see you soon in the next one.